This is step two on how to create a West Coast drag base. In this video, we're creating the gearbox clips. So in the container first, in color, gearbox, sorry. And then create a sketch while the component is still activated on this face. And to begin a gearbox, you want to start with a gearbox planning sketch that you will later use to extrude the plate. But to do that, you need to first figure out the actual ratio that you're using because that's going to affect the placement of the holes. So you want to go to JBN Design Calc and then go to the Custom 1 Speed Drive tab. And I've already inputted some values just to make this quicker, but you want to make sure that all of your settings match what's up here. But if you're doing this from scratch, you just want to go to WCP or you could go to the drive folder with all the drawings over here. But I'm just going to go to WCP and then go to Aluminum Hex Board Gears and then they have all the available gears over here. So you just want to make sure that the two count actually exists. Usually they go in increments of two, but occasionally they'll skip to increments of four. So you just want to make sure that the gear that you selected is there and then input them to create the gear ratio that you want to get the speed that you want. So once you have that, and by the way, if you're creating a drivetrain, your push and current draw should be somewhere around 80. That's generally a safe bet. And if you're using Falcons, you can generally push it to a ratio of around 6.5 to 1. So now that you have the gear ratio that you want and the breakdown that you want, you can start creating the actual sketch. So to do that, you want to figure out something called pitch diameter. Because we're using 20 DP gears, which is what we most commonly use, DP is diametric pitch, and it basically is the teeth per inch of that gear. And the way that you can find pitch diameter is either you can go here to have to check for gears. You can go here and check the pitch diameter, or you could just divide the tooth count by 20. And if you're using a, I think it's 32 DP gear, then you could similarly just divide it by 32. So that's what we're going to do. Keep this open for reference, and then we're just going to make circles that represent the pitch diameter. If you go here, you can see the pitch diameter is where the gears actually mesh. So don't use the outer diameter, use the pitch diameter to create the sketch. So we're going to start with the 12 tooth gear. And then we two of them. And we have a 44 tooth gear. And then on the same axle is a 26 tooth gear. And finally, a 48 tooth gear. So this is going to mesh like this, and then this is going to mesh something like this. And we're just going to add constraints now to make it like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dimension this to be the radius of this gear plus the radius of this gear plus 0 0.003, which is just the value that you're going to use for tolerance. And then do the same on this side, but we're just going to relative dimension this. And make sure that when you're doing these dimensions, you're getting the actual distance and not this. Because that's just the horizontal distance, but you want the full distance, like the hypotenuse of the triangle, if you think of it that way. So these move around on this now. And then constrain these two in the same way. And then you want to make this as compact as possible, but also symmetrical. So we're just going to create a line going down here, maybe a construction line, and then apply the horizontal and vertical constraint. And this is going to be driving the wheel over here and driving the sprocket over here. So we're just going to coincident constraint this. Now the only thing moving is this. So we want this again to be symmetrical, so we're just going to create a line going across here and apply the horizontal vertical constraint again. So now this moves together and I'm going to constrain them in a second after I add this one thing. So the way that you're going to drive these two wheels is, as I mentioned earlier, through chain. You can also use belt, but in this case we're just going to use chain. And we're going to use a thing over here 
for the flex markets. Okay, we're gonna use 16 tooth aluminum double pump sprocket. We're gonna use this for the gearbox. So we're gonna open that. You can see here the pitch diameter of a 16 tooth sprocket. We're gonna use the aluminum one. And the pitch diameter is 1.273. is you need to ensure that this is not going to interfere with this um, with the chain itself so we're just going to create another circle the outer diameter with the chain is 1.503 and just so we can actually no well, that's fine and next we're going to create the motor body because we want to ensure that the motors are not going to hit each other. There are two motors that drive this gear and this gear respectively. So we're just going to go here. Alright, so the diameter looks to be 2.362, we're just going to make that 2.4 for a bit of tolerance. And the same on this side. And it's okay if it looks like these motors are interfering with this, because remember that the motors are going to be on one side of the plate, and then there's going to be like a bowing plate between the two, and then the sprockets and gears are going to be on the other side of the plate. So the motors are the one thing that can interfere. It look like they're interfering because they're not actually interfering, but these gears, you really don't want them to. So remember that this is the pitch diameter. There is 0 0.1 difference between the outer diameter and the pitch diameter. So when we create the constraint that's going to constrain this, you want to remember that. We're going to create a line that goes across here and then dimension that to this take this value divided by 2 and then add 0 0.15 to that so that's going to ensure that the chain will not run into the motors and in, into the gears sorry so now that you have that you want to actually start creating mounting holes for a Falcon 500, if you go back to the drawing, you can see that the mounting hole over here is 0 0.75. And then there's these holes over here that actually mount the motor itself to the plate that we need to cap as well. So 0 0.75. And at this point, these are actually going to create holes in our plate. So you want to remove the construction circles and lines. And then over here, we have a bearing, which is 1.125, and then a bearing here as well, which is 1.125. Now we need to create the mounting holes for the actual motor, which, as I mentioned, is over here. It's 2 inches in diameter, so we're going to create a polygon, inscribed polygon, and make that 1, because that's the radius. This should be a construction circle. Oops, sorry, a uh, construction hexagon, I guess. And then the same for this side. Next, we're going to create the holes themselves. We just need to check the size. That is a 1032 hole. So this dimension should be 3 sixteenths. And then just make So, actually, I'm going to remove this constraint and this one, and I'm going to rotate this so that 
this is actually the horizontal line. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so I'm going to equal constrain all of these circles. Now I realize that this is actually a bit close to this hole, and let's see, maybe the selection difference. It's literally not even 0 0.1 inches away. So we don't actually need six mounting holes. What I'm going to do is just make these four construction holes so that there's four mounting holes for every motor. And then the last hole that you want is the holes that are actually going to mount the gearbox plate itself to the drive base, which are going to be these holes. And you can just click P and then select these two holes, and that's just going to project them into the sketch. So lastly, because there's going to be two plates, you want a way to connect those two plates together, and that is through standoffs. So we're just going to make six mm holes, four of them. And then you want some amount of tolerance, because remember that this is the gear itself, so we can't just tangent these because then this is the actual screw that's going to go into it, but the axle itself is bigger than six millimeters, so it's just going to run into the gears. So I'm going to create a 0.7 circle around it. The axle width itself is probably, well, it's 0.5, but because it's a hex shaft, let's see if I can find a picture. So because, because it's a hex shaft, it's a bit small, but you can see here, it's not going to be a circle, but it, it will rotate. So if you took one point and let it rotate, it would obviously create a circle, right? And that circle is probably closer to somewhere around 0 0.6, 0 0.65, probably. But keep in mind that this is the pitch diameter, and so there's an additional 0 0.1 that you need to account for. That's the outer diameter. So I just added that extra tolerance just to be safe and made it 0 0.7. And then I'm just going to tangent this and this, and then this and this. This just creates the most compact gearbox possible. And then I'm going to do the same for the rest. So that's pretty much all you need to create the plate. So those are all the significant holes. Now you just need to create the actual plate itself. And the way that you're going to do that is just creating lines that go around and then tangent the lines to all the circles. And then with the remaining space to create center arcs. So just do that right now. It's just the full gearbox plate that you can see here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude. This. New component. Make sure that this component is activated and done. And I'm going to do something related to the gearbox. And then hit OK. And now that I have that, I'm going to name this. And then I'm going to create another sketch on this surface. So what I'm going to start doing right now is called pocketing. It can also be called hardening or creating a hidden fold. It's basically just to create a layer material where you don't need it as much material, but you still maintain the structural integrity of whatever plate that you're making. We tend not to do this during season because it takes a bit of time, and right now we're just not at the capacity that we can do that. 
but I think I just thought it would be a good idea to show you this just in case we are able to reach that level at some point. So what I'm going to start by doing is offsetting this outer edge by negative 0.25. And then, so this entire process is just going to be a bit tedious. Let me just preface it by saying that. But I'm just going to go individually through all of these holes and offset them 0.125. And now that you've done that, create construction lines between these. You don't need to make it between every single one, just enough to create some kind of structural integrity to the whole. I also want to try and keep it symmetrical, so I can see here that this should actually go here. And now that you've done that, you want to go and offset each one 0 0.2 total. So that's 0 0.1 on either side. And make sure that these are not construction lines. So now that you've done that, just go through and trim stuff. After all that is done with the pocketing and all you need to do is just extrude and fill it. And finally, when the plate is done, I'm just going to name this outer plate. Actually, no, I'm going to end up copy pasting all this, so I'm just going to go to this level. And then we can change the appearance. There's often a misconception with gearboxes for some reason that the two plates, in the case of this gearbox, these two plates would have to be the same. The only reason that they're the same currently. I'm just going to either copy paste or extrude the exact same sketch to create the exact same plate. The only reason that it's like this right now is because I've already pocketed these plates. So at that point, you're not really gaining much by creating two separate plates. But in an ordinary season where we're not going to be pocketing the plates most likely, we want to use this little material and save as much weight as possible. And to do this, you can just create a smaller second plate because you don't necessarily need the full plate and all the holes that are in it. So even though I haven't done it in this, I'm going to show you an example. I should, yeah, okay, so you can see here, this is one gearbox, but the plate here is smaller than the plate here because you don't need this extra space over here for the second plate. So you want to try and do that rather than keeping them the same unless the plates are pocketed because, like, for instance, in this case, it just it isn't necessary. This is part one of the gearbox. Go to part two for assembly and feel free to refer to the slide deck for reminders and an overview of the steps.